So if you've ever logged into Twitter and you just stare at the feed, constantly refreshing, dropping new information all the time, and you think, how on earth am I supposed to find what I'm looking for? That's where Twitter lists come into play. Twitter lists um, let you monitor groups of accounts or people that you want to see what they're publishing on Twitter and categorize them by issues or topics or put them in different buckets almost. So they help you cut through Twitter's feed to find what you want. The other cool feature about Twitter lists is that they let you see someone's content, what they're tweeting about, without having to follow them. And they're also collaborative, so you can follow other people's lists that they've made or share the ones that you have made with colleagues because it's always better when we work together, right? Let's have a look at how they work. So if you log on to your Twitter account, on the left-hand side, you have this button here that says lists. Click on it and it's gonna show you three different ways that you can interact with a Twitter list. The ones that you own, the ones that you are subscribed to. So for example, I follow one called Disinfo Essentials and the ones that I am a member of. So if I this account ever gets put on a list, you will know and get a little notification. Now, if you wanted to make a list, you have to come to the top right-hand side here to this little icon that looks like a notepad with a little X and click plus. This is gonna let me create a new list. So for example, let's call this COVID-19 health sources. And I'm gonna give it a description, orgs and people who tweet verified information, very important. If you make your Twitter list public, everyone's gonna be able to see it. And also whenever you add someone to your list, they are gonna get a little notification that they've been added on a list. So if you're making a list, for example, of shady news websites that tweet coronavirus disinformation, you might, you might not wanna tip them off that you are monitoring them. If you make it private, it's just for you. No one gets a notification, but then you can't share them and other people can't see them. So there's pros and cons. In this case, I'm gonna make mine private. I'm gonna click next, and then it lets you add members. So um, let's add, for example, the World Health Organization. Let's add um, Johns Hopkins University. Let's add the CDC from the US, the NHS, the National Health Service in the UK. Um, and the Red Cross, because they're doing some really good work around coronavirus as well. Let's add the UK one, because that's where I live. Um, and why not? Let's add the Red Cross in Mexico, because um, that's where I'm from. And once you hit done, this new feed that you see in front of you is only displaying the stuff that has been tweeted out by the six members in your list. Right? So if we scroll down, this is the World Health Organization, the World Health Organization, the NHS, um, and you can very quickly see how now that you have their content just in one place, it's going to be easier to find that if you were trying to sort it and find it in the whole of Twitter and your nonstop feed. And I also didn't have to follow any of these accounts. They're just being put in a bucket for me to look at. Now, if I change my mind and I want to edit it, very simple, go back here to edit, add people, or even delete the list if I want to do it, make it public if I'm ready to give it out to the world. And if it was public, I'd be able to then share it here, copy a list, send via direct link, even tweet it out into the world. Now, there's other ways of adding people onto Twitter lists. So, for example, if I were to go to the World Health Organization's profile just on Twitter, Next to the follow button on the left, there are these three little dots. And if I click on them, it's gonna display a, um, an extra menu that says add or remove from lists. This is where then I can, as I'm surfing the web or the internet or Twitter, click on it and immediately add them onto one of the lists that I have got. And you can also do that on mobile. You, if I was doing the same process on my phone, you'd be able to just add people as you go along. And that's the power of Twitter lists, that you can curate them as you go along.